So as my x58 overclocking attempts didn't really pan out with the remaining CPUs that I had, I decided to move on to some uh, of the older 775 CPUs I currently have available. So I've been covering some other 775 CPUs over the past few weeks or so and I managed to find one pretty interesting uh, E2180 which is very close to the level Tapaka had on his best E2180. So it will be very interesting to see how well could the CPU actually do on LN2. So uh, I've generally been very interested in many of these like popular 775 CPUs or on the models that were popular back in the day like E20 series, E40 series and the Conroe family so I still would like to attempt like E6300, maybe E6550. I already have many of the top scores with many of those older 775 CPUs but many of the models I haven't even tried during my overclocking career, if you can really call it that. So I already have the top scores with the E2160, so I should know like roughly how these CPUs usually run on LN2 and uh, yeah, it will be very interesting to see. So I will be using the Rampage Extreme Team Finland Edition once again. Two sticks of Corsair dominated CDX2 memory, bin by Tabaka or some OCX and uh, Superflower Leadex 8 pack 2000 watt platinum rated power supply, although this rig doesn't really need it, and Kimping Cooling F1 Dark and KPX Thermal Paste. The container is still in its original state, but I will be attempting to do a tapping modification on the container because I would like to make it a little bit faster on the pull down speed. It's very slow on the pull down and it doesn't uh, respond as quickly to LN2 pouring compared to the latest revision of T-Rex, so it has its plus and minus sides if you ask me. So uh, I will be attempting that later, but let's see how it pans out with this particular uh, CPU. So the biggest question mark will be like FSP scaling, like do we hit the FSP wall very early on? We'll see. So I will be using Windows XP and Server 2003 once again, and yeah, let's hope for the best and let's see what happens. So uh, I'll start cooling down. And I will meet you again inside the operating system with the capture card like before. Okay, so now I'm in the operating system, so... So let's try to run W Prime 32 and this is at 4.9 GHz. Top score in W Prime 32 with the CPU model is 16.187 at 5 gigahertz by tag from Austria like spot on 5 gigahertz or so so that's 16031 top score with just one attempt pulled straight from the bars so pretty interesting I think 1024 amp could already be challenged at this frequency. And okay, that's the new top score in W Prime 1024M with the uh, Intel Pentium E2180 at 510.452 seconds at uh, spot on 4.9. Previous top score by TAG from Austria at 5 21.547 I think so this if I'm correct this should be like uh, is it like 11 second improvement over the previous top score made by tag but this was at 4.9 and his run was at 4.95 so 50 megahertz higher frequency so that's definitely quite a large megahertz difference already so uh, my efficiency is definitely awesome in this benchmark so uh, I'll just save this and I'll try some of the single threaded stuff but sadly there seems to be a very hard FSP wall on this CPU at 495 to 500 FSP no matter what I try. So uh, it doesn't look very promising at the moment.
It is very barely. Okay, there's definitely some limitation on the CPU at like 495 to 500 FSP, no matter what I try, and it just crashed. Okay, that's the Super Pi 32M top score with the E2180 at uh, 9 minutes 45.313. Previous top score by that Swiss guy, so is it Visual 90? And he was at 9 minutes 55.718, so that's like 10 second improvement or so. And this is the second sub 10 minute run in Superfly 32M with the E2180 CPU model. And the biggest like highlight of this result is that we only used a CPU frequency of 4.93 gigahertz. Memory of course being pretty good. So that's like 1980 or 1972 at 675, 1860 common rate one. And Michel 90, from Switzerland used a CPU frequency of 5.1 gigahertz, but with worse memories. So uh, we are almost like 200 megahertz lower on the CPU, like 170 megahertz lower, and we still managed to outperform the uh, previous rank one score made by Visual 90 by like 10 seconds or so. So that's pretty enormous if you ask me. So good efficiency, good memory, good motherboard, and so on. So now the only results I'm missing is SuperPi 1AM and the CPU Z validation. Yeah, looks pretty certain already that I will not be getting the highest validation, but at least the most important like performance scores I already have. Okay, so it didn't actually go that bad, although I expected the CPU to be a lot better on the frequency side of things. So the maximum frequency ended up being very close to 5 GHz, like 4.95 or 4.97, but it's definitely far away from the highest CPU frequency achieved by Michel 90 from Switzerland. And I think he did a bit over like 5.2, like 5.23 or so. So uh, you generally, you, you definitely need a CPU that can do at least like 490 FSP on air cooling. This particular CPU uh, managed to post like 470 something. So, it's, it, so it was in the same range as the best E2180s from Tabaka or Samo CX, but uh, it does vary like how much does the FSP scale from the cold temperatures. So this particular uh, CPU only scaled like a bit under 30 megahertz, so that's definitely very low for a CPU like this. So uh, we are looking for like 520 or 520 plus FSP and that's uh, times 10 is 5.2 gigahertz and so on. So. Uh, I need to find a better CPU if I want to take down the 1M and CPU Z validation. But at least I managed to get many of the important top scores like from performance perspective with the CPU model. So W Prime 32, I think my fastest run was 16.03 seconds and that was like 150 milliseconds faster than the previous top score by TAG from Austria, which was like 16.187, but at higher uh, CPU frequency of like 5 gigahertz versus 4.9 on my run. So my efficiency has definitely been great for W primes and so on. 
1024M was like 11 second improvement from, I mean, over the previous top score made by TAG, like 4.9 gigahertz on my run versus 4.95 on the TAG's run, I think. So it was like uh, 510 versus 521.5, something like that. And then Superpy 32M, I managed to do a very nice 10 second improvement over the previous top score made by Michel 90 from Switzerland, I think. So that was four, four minutes, 45 seconds versus four minutes, uh, I mean nine minutes and 55 seconds. But the biggest highlight was the difference in the CPU frequency. So 4.93 versus 5.1 on the CPU. So uh, that already shows how important everything is for the, for the Superpy 32M test, like the overall platform, the motherboard of choice, the memory, north bridge efficiency, the operating system itself, and so on. So uh, that was pretty awesome, if you ask me. Tapacast run, which was the previous rank two, and it's now the rank three score, that has very good efficiency, considering that he only used a CPU frequency of 4.75 on his run. I managed to get Pi fast, but extremely barely. So that was like 20.08 seconds versus the previous top score of uh, like 20.09 by tag from Austria, I believe. So uh, uh, it was very close as my CPU frequency wasn't uh, like so good. So I was running significantly lower uh, frequency on the CPU, but I managed to get the top score on Pi fast, but very barely. So. Uh, Four out of six of the important top scores. We'll see if I try to bin more of, more of these CPUs. Like later on, I would like to get the one M as well and like CPU Z validation. So on one M, I got rank three score. So it was like uh, 11.85 or 11.87, something like this. So that's definitely that's the third run that has been faster than 12 seconds in Superpy one M. The target is 11.7, like spot on or something like that. So uh, I definitely need like at least like 5,030 to 5,050 megahertz to get the rank one score in Superby 1M. And obviously much higher frequency to, for the CPU-Z validation. But yeah, that will be for the next time. So I will upload these scores to hardwarebot.org. So definitely check them out if you are interested in them. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Maybe check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work. And yeah, thanks for watching some of my legacy overclocking content once again. And I will see you on the next one.